Good morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving Sunday. Wow. Another new month. We thank God for how he has been with us already in this year 2020. Glad you could join us today. Please, we're going to have a short prayer. Open your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 with me. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And the Bible says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just give you thanks. We glorify your name for who you are. Father, we pray for your mercy, O oh God. We pray for your mercy on our lives, O oh God, our families, every nation, O oh God. We pray for your mercy. Forgive us, O oh God. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you heal the land. Heal nations, O oh God. Heal individuals, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I especially pray, O oh Lord, for anyone that is sick in their bodies right now, that you will place your healing power upon them, Lord, and they will heal, be healed and set free in the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify you and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We're going to place the service before you, Father, and we say, Father, have your way. And everyone that is watching, Father, Lord, Lord, let their lives be transformed for excellence, for good, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O oh God, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Whoa. Now, please join us for a lovely session of praise and worship, followed by the Word of God. We'll also have a lovely session of thanksgiving after then. Please stay blessed, stay tuned, keep safe, and God bless. Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great is our God. Oh, my 
my heart will see how great is our God. Say, how great are you, Lord? How great is our God. Say with me, how great is our God. Oh, see how great. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before you. Glorious, glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before you. One more time, say glorious God, beautiful. Excellent God, we bow before you. We bow, bow before your throne. Worship at your feet. Bow before your throne. You're the glorious God. Bow before your throne. Worship at your feet. Bow before your throne. You're the glorious God. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before your throne. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before your throne. Bow before your throne, worship at your feet. Bow before your throne, you're the glorious God. Bow before your throne, worship at your feet. Bow before your throne, you're the glorious Hallowed 
be your name. Ooh. You are reason, name above all names, name above all Hello and greetings in Jesus' name. Such a great joy and privilege to be able to bring the word of life to you in the comfort of your home. Wherever you may be watching, it's a new day. It's a day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice continually and be glad in it. We're grateful for this new month of May. Look at that. January, February, March, April and May. And we are almost going down to the end of the year. We thank God for his faithfulness and his loving kindness that have kept us and sustained each and every one of us. Despite what is going on around us, Jesus is still good. God is still good. And so stay tuned today as we release this word of God and trust the Holy Spirit to bring enlightenment and change and empowerment to you your family and the church of God all over the world in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe you enjoy the time of worship that we had earlier. We give God the praise for the team that have been working very hard behind the scene. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this privilege to receive the word of God. We thank you that your word is spirit and they are alive. Thank you, Lord, that your word is changing us. Your word is transforming our city and our nation, our family and our society. We thank you, Jesus, O oh God, for the opportunity to bring your word. Let the entrance of your word bring light and understanding to every simple heart today, O oh Lord. And let your word, O oh God, change our story forevermore. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and so shall it be that your word will proceed out of your mouth shall not return unto you empty, but it shall prosper in all things where to it is sent, and it shall accomplish that which you please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's dig deep into the Word of God today. In the series that we started today is Engage Part 3, and we are going to be looking at the battle plan. We have looked at the battle field. We have looked at also uh, the, the battle life. Today is the battle plan. Engage. God wants you and I to engage in this world that we live in against forces that does not want us to become what God wants us to be, who God wants us to be, have the lifestyle God wants us to live, and have things that God does, that God wants us to have. They don't want us to have such things. So you need to engage. There are territories God has given to you and I that are being competed for 
whether in your mind, in your thinking, your home, in your finances, in your education, in your business, your career, your life, in your ambition. There are forces that are contending against you, but God wants you and I to be victorious. Our foundational scripture is in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Let's look into it quickly. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. This is what God wants you and I to do. He wants you to fight a good fight of faith. Not some dirty fight or dirty game somewhere. Good fight of faith. What makes it good is because God is involved in it. What makes it good is a fight of righteousness. What makes it good is the fight of light over darkness. God have made you to be a winner. In a, in, in book of Romans chapter 8 verse 37, he says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conqueror through him that love us. You are victorious. Let's look at the scripture that will enable us to understand what we are talking about today. As I will be showing you the principle that will guide us in preparing ourselves even for battle. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, the word of the Lord says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. This world that we talked about, as we look at what we have been saying the past few weeks, we said this life that we are in is not a fun fear. It's a battlefield. It's a battleground. And God wants you successful. He wants you victorious over everything that may want to diminish your joy, steal your peace, take your resources, or take you out of this world that we live in today. So for you to be able to engage and take the territories that belong to you, you need to sow the seed of battle so that you can take over. That's why you need to fight the good fight of faith. And that is why you need to know that there is the greatest one who is living in the inside of you, his name is Jesus, and he's going to help you. He's going to sustain you. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31, the Bible says, If God be for us, who can be against us? I see you rise higher and go further in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every soldier of Christ is God's front line assault force. God has equipped you to be a soldier. That is why he wants you to be able to do what? Endure hardship as a good soldier and do not entangle with the affairs of this world so that you may please him that have enlisted you into the army, into the work, into the operation. God Almighty is backing you and our help. He is a commander of the heavenly battalion. He releases his forces to stand behind you so that you can be able to be victorious and take the territories that he has given to you. In this crucial time that we are in today, Satan is releasing all forms of demonic power from hell to come and assault the heart with sickness, diseases, impossibility, infertility, hopelessness, all kind of wickedness. It's coming all over the place, but I tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will rise up above all of them and be victorious on every front and on every side in the name of Jesus. That's why you cannot relent in your effort. That's why you cannot go, go down. That's why you cannot give up. That's why you must not be disappointed pointer. You must not be discouraged. That's why you must not suffer disgrace and disapproval and become strong in the law so that you can be able to do what? Take the territories that belong unto you. If we are going to make it through in this last day that we are in today and be victorious, you are going to be able to do what? Put yourself up to God and say, God, I'm unnecessarily and unusually and unreasonably committed to engage. 
so that I can take the territories that you have for me. Let's look at some, some, some points that will enable us to have a foundational understanding of the plan. Because if you don't know what it is to plan and what to plan, you will not be able to succeed in the battle. There is no man that goes to war that does not sit down first and count the cost. You need to sit down and count the cost and see whether I'm going to win or I'm not going to win. What will make we, what we, what's going to make me to win this battle or what's going to make me not to win this battle so that you can plan and you can see how far you can go. You need to understand one thing that to be able to formulate a well orchestrated divine plan or layout for battle, you need to have certain understanding. Number one, the extent to which you know the truth is the extent to which you will effectively succeed and operate in engagement, in spiritual warfare, in spiritual battle. It is important for you to know that knowledge is important. It is important for you to know that God wants you to have an understanding of what you are doing, of where you are going, the level you are in as a person. In Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2, the Bible says, For the soul to be without knowledge, this is not good. God wants you to have that understanding. It is required for you to know that the extent of truth you know will determine your effectiveness in engagement, in spiritual warfare. In John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, Jesus Christ speaking to his disciple, he said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth will make you free. It will bring a revelation to you. You will be engrossed and engrossed in the truth of God, and the weight of glory of that truth will give you deeper understanding, both for the present and even for the future, so that when you engage, you already know, you have the understanding of what what you are doing, where you are going, and how to engage. Look at that. It's important for you to know that God wants you to be successful in your dealing, your understanding. In John chapter 17, verse 17, it says, Sanctify them with the truth, for your word is truth. For you to be able to do this, you need to know that God wants you to be soaked in knowledge, in understanding, to be saturated. Number two, number two thing that will enable you to understand what how to plan is certain level of spiritual maturity is required for you to be able to deal with the devil. To mature means to come of age. To mature means to be developed. To mature means to be ripened. To mature means to be sheltered and above. So you need to do what? You need to understand the place of spiritual maturity so that you can be able to checkmate the enemies of your progress, the enemies of your victory, the enemies of your advancement. We look at this story of a gentleman who brought his son to the disciple of Jesus Christ in the book of Mark chapter 9, verse 17 to 27. This man had a son that had a deaf and dumb spirit, and he brought him to the disciples so that they can help him and the son can be delivered, because God's will is for us to be delivered so that we can do it, because we can be able to be victorious at all times, and then persevere to become who God wants us to be. So they brought this boy. But they did all they could. They lay and they prayed, but there was nothing that happened to him. And Jesus Christ came because the father had to go back to Jesus Christ and say, You see, your disciples could not, could not help my son. He said, What is wrong with him? And Jesus Christ said, Oh, ye of little faith, which means he wants them to mature more. So he commanded the evil spirit that was operating against that boy, the deaf and dumb spirit, and asked it to leave the, to leave the boy. And they obey Jesus Christ because he had an authority in his mouth which he has expected the disciples to also use. So the, the boy was free. He was set free completely. Victory came to him and his father. 
So they went to Jesus Christ and said, Master, why is it that we could not cast out the devil? He said, none of these things can happen except by prayer and fasting. You need to come to a point of maturity. You can't be a baby Christian forever all your life. Look at how far you have gone in Christianity. You need to come to a point where you understand that you have come of age as an individual because of your response to tests that are coming your way, because of the way you are dealing with adversary because of what you are doing the time of peace preparing for a day of war you need to come to spiritual maturity the top point that you need to know as we engage is to understand that satanic encroachment and deception can lead to death if you are if you are if you are not prepared if you are not watchful if you are not sober as a christian as a person as an individual you can mix light and darkness together you can mix petrol and water together and expect to get the same result no you need to understand that you need to separate yourself from darkness so that the light of god can shine even through you every time as a soldier as a soldier so that the devil will not take advantage of you so that you will not your God will not be let down look at what happens in Acts chapter 5 verse 1 to 4 uh, P- devoted Christian and Nyan Sapphira they lie against they lie they lie to the Holy Spirit because of the resources that they have and they, they, they could not declare their full asset at the time that God expect them to do it and so it, it, Satan deceived them and they went into deception and they died you need to know that God wants you to be thorough as a Christian. God wants you pure. God wants you holy. God wants you righteous every day of your life. You need to go to God and say, Lord, deliver me from personal faults. Deliver me from willful sins so that I can be able to be strong in the Lord and engage in the battle that you have already permitted into my hand. Number four thing that you need to know, the four truth as we prepared for the battle and engage, is when we are attacked, we must respond with the word of God. When attacks come our way, you should not be upset. You should not say, why me? You should not say, I don't, I, I don't think I can take this anymore. You, you should not give up. When adversary come against you, when trouble comes against you, at times it's a test of your maturity. At times it's a test to see, of, of, of your promotion, to see the level that you need to get to and take it to a higher level. At times it can be a situation, a river that you need to cross, a breakthrough that needs to come your way, a barrier that you need to break down. When we are attacked, we must respond with the word of God. Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. It's a very long scripture. You know, after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And the first test that the devil brought to him is a turn this stone into bread. Of course, he was hungry. He needed food. After 40 days and 40 nights, not eating and drinking anything. Look at the first temptation. But look at what Jesus Christ said. He said, it is written. It is written, which means this is the word of God. This is the manual. This is the principle that has been set down. You must do what? You cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that preserves the mouth of God. The second temptation, Jesus Christ, I mean, the devil took Jesus Christ to the, to the top of the ill top of the, of the temple and said, jump. <laughs> Look at that. Serious temptation. And say, because I know God will give his angels charge over you. Even the devil knows the scripture. He wanted to confuse Jesus. That's why you need to be rooted and grounded and understand the place and power of rightly appropriating the word of God to every situation of your life. Jesus Christ said, it is written. It is written. It is written. This guy that you must not tempt the Lord your God. Number three, the devil took him again and show him all the facet and the beauty of the whole world. He said, this is all mine. It's been delivered to my hand and I, and I can give it to whom I please. He said, just bow before me and I will give it to you. Jesus Christ said, it is written, you must worship the Lord your God only and serve him. 
which means we must not bow to any other idol around us. It's important for you to know that God wants you to be able to understand the place of the word of God by saying it is written. It is written. We must respond with the word of God because the spiritually matured people, we are not immune to satanic attacks. Number four, quickly. As we look at some basic truths that will enable us to plan for the battle around us. People who have no relationship with God have no power or authority over the wicked, over satanic forces, over demonic powers. In the book of Acts chapter 19, verse 13 to 16, we read a story of some people who came around who saw what Paul, the apostle, was doing, how he was commanding demons to leave, helping people, healing the sick. And they came, they are called the sons of Sceva. And they said, well, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, we command you together. They have no relationship with God. They were not saved. They were just ordinary people who were just all around. And those forces of darkness beat them so much and chased them out that they were bruised all over. They needed salvation in their life. They needed a relationship with Jesus Christ. Perhaps you are hearing me today and you have not yet made Jesus a lot of your life. Don't be a food for the devil. Don't be a mincemeat for the wicked. Surrender your life for Christ and Jesus will fill you with his power with his authority with his authority and he will defend you in battle and he will fight for you and your battle will become his battle and peace will come upon you because in exodus chapter 14 verse 14 he said the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace it's important for you that god wants to fight for you and her god wants to help you he wants to sustain you in psalm 35 verse 1 he said contend with those that contend with me fight against those that fight against me. In Psalm 27, he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? He said, The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Even when my enemy come up to eat of my flesh, they stumble and they fall. Though an host encamp around me, I will not fear, because the Lord is with me. When God is with you, it is important for you to know that you have authority, you have power over satanic forces. Number six, quickly, that you need to know the sixth truth that you need to know as we engage and have a plan for the battle ahead to know that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. There is a seal of the Holy Spirit upon you and I, a stamp of God, a rubber seal of God, a seal of approval, a seal of ownership of God is upon us. When the devil see the seal upon us, they tremble and they fear out of their secret places and they, and they are chased out completely. You don't have to fear any longer as you have been authorized to cast out devils. It's important important for you to know that. It's important for you to know that God have authorized you to cast out devils. We have the seal. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, he said, we have the seal. We have been sealed in the Holy Spirit. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 17, he said, let nothing trouble me henceforth, because I bear the mark of God in my body. It's important for you to know that we are sealed with the seal of promise, the seal of the Holy Spirit. The identity of God is upon our life. The hand of God is upon our lives. The seal of the Holy Ghost is upon our lives. You need to know that as a truth so that you can be free every time and every day of your life as we engage in the battle that is around us today. Number seventh truth that you need to know as we prepare, as we have plans to engage in the battle is the devil runs and flees from authorities in the name of Jesus Christ. When we begin to use our authority as Christian in the name of Jesus, devils leave. Demons tremble. They flee away. They run away from us, from all 
all our territories and from all our oppression, we chase them out completely. First John chapter 4, verse 4 that we read, Hallelujah. He huh? said, You have got little children, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. James 4 7, he says, Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. First John chapter 5 also said in verse 4, He said, This is the victory that overcomes the world. He said, Whoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We are overcomers. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that love us. We are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. God wants you to do what? He wants you to have the authority in the name of Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2, if you read from verse 9 and 10, from verse 9 to 11 thereabout, the Bible says, And God has highly exalted Jesus and given, given him a name that is above every every other name that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and earth and under the heart and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father demons devils they run and flee from the presence of people who has authority in the name of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ Seated at the right hand of God the Father, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, Bible says that we are seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. Look at that. We are seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Where is he seated? In heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion. And every name that is named in this world and in that which to come. That is the authority you have as you engage in the battle. Let these truths help you today. Let this truth set you free today. Let this truth bring understanding and revelation to your mind today. And let it make a way of escape for you, a way to understand that you have been made free, even in righteousness. Number eight. The eighth truth that you need to know as we begin to do what? Engage is to appreciate the power in Jesus' name. Because we have been authorized to do what? Police the earth in the spirit realm. Born again Christian, you have been given the authority to police the heart in the spirit realm. That is why whatever we bind on heart is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on heart would also be loosed in heaven. That is why whatever devil is behind or involved in any area of our lives and city territory, they must bow at the mention of the name of Jesus. We said it earlier in the last number. It said the name of Jesus is a name that is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, and things on the heart, and things under the heart. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. With this understanding, you are now ready to get into the principle of engagement right now in the battle plan. What are these principles that will help you and I? What are, what are we really fighting for? What is it that God wants you to hold strong? What are these principles that will, that will enable you to unbath this plan in your heart, in your life as a person, so you can have something to hold on to? You have to be able to know what you are fighting for. Number four, number one, look at these principles quickly to guide us in the battle plan. Principle number one is the principle of salvation. You need to understand that God wants you saved. In the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. In verse 3, you know, if you go back to verse 3, it says, except a man, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Second Corinthians chapter 
chapter 5, verse 17, he says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. You need to understand the place of salvation. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. God wants you saved. He wants you saved because for you to engage in battle with unseen forces, spiritual wickedness, and cohorts, you must be under a management of Jesus Christ. You must be under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Jesus must be lord over your life. Jesus must be the director of your life. Jesus must be the leader of your life. Jesus must be the one that is that is your Lord, that is the, that, the, that has a spiritual authority over you. There's somebody that you are reporting to, somebody that you know that you are working with. You need Jesus in your corner in your life and salvation guarantees that in this world that we live in today. What is the second principle? It is the principle of the Holy Spirit baptism. You need the Holy Spirit to fill you up. You need him to come into your life. You need him to, to endue you with the power of God. On the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, if you read from verse 1 there, he said, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, and they were seated in the upper room, and suddenly there was a mighty rushing wind. That was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was moving. He was walking in into that room. He was getting ready to engage with them. And uh, there was a cloven tongues of fire that stood upon their head. And the Bible said in verse, in, uh, 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 in the word of the Lord, in, uh, in verse 4, it said the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began to speak in tongues, different languages, different languages. They started praying the Holy Ghost, the language of the Holy Spirit. Many people that were there were saying, who are these people speaking our language? The Holy Spirit gave them utterance and they spoke in new tongues. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the word of the Lord said, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the uttermost part of the heart. The empowerment. Somebody shout the empowerment. The Bible also said in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, he said, oh, you are baptized in water, he said, but now there is one that is coming after me, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That is empowerment. You need to be empowered. As a Christian, you need to be empowered. As somebody you want to engage, even in this battle, in this world today, battle to take territories, battle for your destiny, battle for your health, battle for your marriage, battle over your children, battle for your city, battle for your nation, battle for the prosperity of the land, for great turnaround in your home, in your life, in your family, in your business, your marketplace, in your ministry, you need to understand the place of the Holy Spirit empowerment, the spiritual empowerment that comes as you begin to receive Jesus Christ into your life. The Holy Spirit fills you up. He empowers you so that you can have the enablement and have the weight of glory in your life and exercise your dominion as a person. I see you win on every side. I see you victorious in the name of Jesus. Christ. What is the third principle? It is a principle of believers' authority. We have authority as believers. God has given you authority. God has given me authority so that we can do what? Flourish on this planet. Uh, victorious. Win on every front, on every side. And no force will be able to hold you down as a person. You have an authority. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, he said, we are seated with Jesus Christ in 
heavenly places. Number two, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It's important for you to know that you have authority on this world that we live in today, in this planet heart, authority in the heavenly places, authority on the planet heart, whatever decree you issued on the heart, it will be issued in heaven. Whatever you allow on heart will be allowed in heaven. Whatever you permit here will be permitted in heaven. Whatever you disallow will also be disallowed in heaven. God has given you authority. He has also given us the authority of agreement. He said, when two of us shall agree on earth as touching an issue, it shall be done for us by our Father who is in heaven. You have authority as a believer. God wants you to use that authority. It's a principle that you need to hold strongly and dare to if you need, if you must succeed in the battle in this world that we live in today. If you want to be shoulder and head above, if you want to ride high, if you want to go further, if you want to work great, if you want to succeed, if you want to do great things, if you want to operate in the authority and dominion, if you want to rule and to reign in the counsel and the power and the purpose of God, you need to exercise your authority as a believer. What is the next principle? The fourth principle, as we begin as a guideline for our battle plan, the fourth principle is the principle of prayer. God wants you to have prayer understanding. He wants you to have skills and to understand what it means to pray. In the book of Luke chapter 11, when the, the, the disciples came to Jesus, they said, teach us to pray. Why? They want to know about prayer. They saw Jesus in early in the morning, rising up, going to pray. He goes to the secret place, and by the time he comes back, great things are happening. Demons are subject to him. Miracles take place. On clean spirit leave. People come and receive salvation. Lives are transformed. Cities are changed everywhere. Withered hands are straightened. Those who are dead are raised up. The barren begin to conceive. People with issue of blood they receive their healing and recovering. How did this happen? The power of prayer. Principle of prayer. We need to engage heaven in prayer. The word of the Lord told us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 he said, pray without ceasing. To pray means to engage heaven and get to the presence of God. It's a two-way communication between you and God. You talking to God, God talking to you. It's not a one-way traffic. It's two-way traffic. When you go to God in prayer, God also speaks to you because he gives you instruction. He guides you. He leads you in what you need to do. He instructs you in the way that you should go so that you can understand the way to go. In the book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, he say whether you turn to the right or to the left, you will always hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in him. When you turn to the right or you turn to the left, God wants to speak to your life. God wants to direct you. In Romans chapter 8 verse 14, he say for us, many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That is what happens in prayer. When we begin to engage in prayer. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, the word of the Lord said to us, do not be anxious about anything, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. The power, the principle of prayer. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, the Bible says, man always ought to pray and not faint. To faint means to give up. To faint means to feel disappointed and disgraced. To faint means to be weak and to be tired. Man always ought to pray and not faint. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, is a ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Verse 8 says, either ask receives, either seek finds, and either knocks, the door shall be open. The principle of prayer. 
The fifth principle of engaging in battle is the principle of divine healing. God wants to make you whole. He wants you whole as you go to battle. He wants you healthy. He wants you strong in your mind, in your physical being, mentally, spiritually, physically. In the book of 3 John, the only chapter, verse 2, he says, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prosper, God wants you healthy. In First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-four, say Jesus Christ took our infirmity, even even upon Himself, and by His stripes we are healed. Healing is our bread. God wants you whole. He doesn't want you to fall apart. He doesn't want you to break down. He wants you to be whole as you go into battle in every area of your life. The sixth principle of this engagement in the battle to plan is a principle of faith. Faith is important in everything that we do. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In verse 6, he says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that come to him must believe that he exists and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It's important for you to know that God wants you to operate in the principle of faith. In Mark 11, verse 22 and 20 to 24, Jesus Christ said, Have faith in God. If you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, without any doubt in your heart, the Bible said the mountain shall be removed and be cast into the sea. Faith is important for us to move mountain. Faith is important for us to change our situation and change the world that we live in right now. And lastly, the seventh principle of battle plan is a principle of prosperity. God wants you to prosper in everything that you do. Everything that you lay your hands upon is important for you that prosperity is important. God does not want you poor. He does not want you broke. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. He said, There is one that releases of plans and it leads to prosperity. There is one that withholds, it leads to poverty. He said, The liberal soul shall be made prosperous of fire, and he that water himself shall be watered. In Psalm 66, verse 12, he said, You have caused men to ride over our head. We've been through fire, we've been through water, but you brought us into a place of abundance into a wealthy place. God wants you to prosper. He wish above all things for you to prosper in everything that you do. God wants you prosperous. That is why you need to understand that this principle will help you and to guide you to be able to know the mind of God and understand what you are really fighting for, what you are going for. This will prepare you. This will give you the understanding of, and the plan that is required for us to do to engage. A story was told about a group of people that went on the beach. And you know, on the beach, there are a lot of sand, white sand, brown sand. And they walked on this sand. There are a lot of footsteps all around. But by the time they were coming back, they could not see their footpaths and footsteps any longer. Why? Because the rage of the sea has wiped away the footpath. That is the same thing that happens. It's called forgiveness. God wants to forgive you today as an individual. No matter what you have done as an individual, His grace is available for you. His mercy is available for you. That is why I'm asking you today, with, if you have not yet made Jesus the Lord of your life, that God Almighty wants to wipe your slate clean. He wants to forgive you. He wants to help you. He wants to enlist you. He wants to deliver you you. You want to save your soul. So if you are there today and you have not yet made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to pray for you today that Jesus will come into your heart. Or perhaps you have become saved before, but something went wrong along the way. You lost your fire. You've backslidden. You've gone back. You're no longer as, as strong as a Christian again as you used to be. I'd like to pray for you with every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we pray today in the name of 
Jesus Christ, that Lord, you will touch every heart. Just pray this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I love you and I thank you for shedding your precious blood for me on the cross of Calvary. I am grateful that you died for me. Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Wash me in the precious blood and save my soul today. Jesus, come into my heart and come and be my Lord and be my Savior so that all things can be passed away from my life and behold, let all things become brand new. Let me become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Save me to the uttermost. I'm grateful, Jesus, that I am a child of God and I am born again in Jesus' mighty name. If you have prayed that prayer, you have asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart. And I have no doubt that Jesus will start fighting for you. Listening is harming to them. So if you have made that, uh, that, that declaration in your life, we want to hear from you. We want you to write us, email us, and tell us your report, your testimony, and your goodness, of your salvation, of your restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we thank you for this privilege and the honor to bring your word today. As these words have come forth, oh God Almighty, I pray for a change of story and enlistment and empowerment, oh God Almighty. Maybe somebody struggling right now, oh God, as a soldier, equip them, resource them, empower them, lift them up, oh God. Maybe there is a fallen soldier, wounded soldier, heal them, raise them up today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Almighty, one will begin to chase a thousand and two chase ten thousand. We give you praise and glory and honor and all the adoration in Jesus mighty name we pray amen God bless you I believe you received the Word of God stay tuned as we get ready for our moment of Thanksgiving there's still more coming watch this God bless you Jesus Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to May. It is the first Sunday of the month, which means that it is our Thanksgiving Sunday. May is the month of great rescue. So I hope that you are ready to dance unto the Lord. Even though we are at home, it does not mean that we cannot give the Lord a dance offering. So I hope you're ready because I'm ready. As you know me, I'm always ready to dance. So I hope you're ready to dance this morning to the praise and worship. Happy Sunday. I'm just here to say thank you to God for adding another year to Israel's life. We give him all the praise and all the glory. He is three years old. God has kept him for me. He's guided us. He's given me strength to raise him so far. And I just give God all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God, hallelujah. I'm testifying because I'm 50. 
years ago when I lost my dad uh, a little bit for him to become 50 I started hearing voices occasionally that you're going to die like your father died before your 50th birthday uh, it got so worse in 2015 when I fell sick of malaria after returning from Nigeria and I was already making plans that yeah that's time for me to go but I share this with my older brother who has passed the age of 50 we pray together I'm giving glory to God I am 50 and it's my 20th year wedding anniversary Hallelujah. I want to thank God for everything he has been doing in my life. I want to thank him for giving me the grace to see the first Sunday in the month of May. I want to thank him for his protection, his guidance, his provision to myself and my loved ones. I want to thank him on behalf of TP Hell House CCG and now CCG Worldwide. I want to thank him for he never allowed myself and my loved ones and even TPL to be a victim of this deadly virus. I want to thank him for I know the Lord will comfort those that have lost their loved ones. As a result of this deadly disease, I want to thank him for I know we shall live, we shall not die, we shall live to declare the glory of the Lord, to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living in this year 2020 and several, several, several years to come. I want to thank him for everything and I have a message for you guys. Be safe, keep calm. Jesus is in control. Amen. I just want to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you've done for me what you've done for my family, for what you've done for the church. I'm so grateful, Lord, that I'm alive and well. I give you thanks. Father, thank you for the promotion that you have given unto me, even in this month. To you be all the praise. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready for this one? Wow, we thank God for an amazing time in his presence. May the presence of God continue to be with you all the days of your life in Jesus' name. The theme for the month of May is Great Rescue Part 5, featuring spiritual maturity. We'll be looking at number one, learning to grow and mature our faith. Number two, exercising our spiritual authority. And number three, attaining victory in every area of our lives. May God's grace be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. Our worship address is on the screen. Check out the website for more information and our contact details to reach us. Connect with us on social media. The links are available in the description box and they are present on the screen. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share to touch a life. Subscribe to our channel for more videos to come. Also, every Wednesday we meet online at 7.30pm for an interactive Bible study or an igniting prayer meeting. On Saturdays at 6am we have our Arise and Shine inter-denominational prayer meeting. 60 minutes of non-stop prayer. The login details are available on the screen and it would be wonderful if you were to join us. God bless you as you do so. It's offering time and offering time is blessing time. This is a chance for us to give our treasure to the Almighty God who has blessed us and given us provisions beyond our understanding. The Lord is faithful. When we release what is in our hands, he also releases what's in his hands. And whatever is in God's hand is always bigger and mightier than anything that we can ever give him. The word of the Lord says in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, the last part of it, it says, more blessed to give than to receive. When you learn to give, you must also learn to receive because what's in God's hand is always mightier as we release what's in our hands. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give to you. So it's time for us to give all our treasure and our offering to God, our tithes, our thanksgiving offering, our vows, and every other financial commitment that you have made to the Almighty God. The details are on the screen to give a bank transfer or to give online, click on our website and scroll down and click on giving. By the time you get there, you follow the instruction. You can give by PayPal or give by card. God loves a cheerful giver. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this privilege and the opportunity to give to you out of the treasure of the abundance that you have given to us. 
We thank you, O God Almighty, for all spiritual, physical, material blessing that you have in stock for us. Father, open the windows of heaven and pour your blessing upon us today. Let all devourers be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I pray you make way for us where there are no ways. I pray you raise somebody's head, lift somebody up, prosper somebody in their academics, pursuits, give them excellence, promote somebody in their marketplace, in the ministry, and let there be rivers even in the desert. We thank you, Lord, that you are making ways for us where there are no ways. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, let's make this com confession to the Almighty God and let's say together, this month of May, the grace of God is sufficient for me to fulfill my calling, to mature in faith, and become more resourceful in all dimensions of my life. Gifts of equipped people are adding value to my life. I am fulfilled with knowledge. I am filled with knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and increasing in spiritual capacity, being fruitful in every good work, walking worthy of the Lord, and declaring his praise in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Until we come your way again some other time, may the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord send help to you from north and south and east and the west in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. See you soon.